All right, everyone. Uh, welcome to another session of uh, Tech Talk uh, with Jeff Cote here at Pacific Yacht Systems. All right. Uh, we've got a question from a fellow boater. The boater asks and sets up the question and goes, I have a new boat to me that has two inverter chargers, one inverter for redundancy and two chargers to charge a large house battery bank. All right. So it must be a big boat. And Roy was at anchor and he noticed a little bit of an oil diesel slick from his diesel generator. And um, Roy called the mechanic and asked, why is it that his generator seems to be overworking? And the mechanic told Roy um, that if I had two chargers on and a hot water tank, uh, that maybe was too much load. All right. So without being too specific to Roy's question, but also enough general information for everyone, the reality is that many of us as boaters even though we have a generator on our boat, that generator on our boat, and for most of us, that would be an AC generators. Not that it's the only choice you can have, but most likely it's an alternating current generator. The loads that exist on a boat quite often exceed the capacity of any generator or even shore power of a boat. And it really doesn't matter if your boat is 40 feet, 60 feet, 80 feet, 100 feet. To be honest, it happens quite a lot that us boaters have to uh, manage power. And certainly in the situation, what Roy finds himself is that he has two inverter chargers, which the two chargers uh, working together at the same time in a hot water tank could easily, uh, you know, a charger could easily take, depending on the size of the charger, right? Um, you know, a 100 amp charger could easily draw 20 amps. And if it's a 150 amp charger or 200 amp charger, that could be 40 amps at 120. So it's not hard to imagine that if you have two chargers working at the same time and you've got a hot water tank also running, that you're going to be loading up that generator quite a lot. So the good news is for most of us, um, there's going to be actually an amperage uh, meter or an amp meter at the AC panel. And that should give you a little bit of a clue as to if you're loading up your generator or your shore power connection too much. And like I said a little bit earlier before, it's important to realize that you can't do everything at once. Otherwise, the generator is going to be sized for peaks. And it's not good either for a generator to be idling or to be underutilized most of the time in the hopes of not worrying about peaks. So you sort of always size a generator shore power to be, especially a generator, to be what you expect most of the time. And then the responsibility is to the boater to manage their loads, in this case, AC loads, to make sure that you don't overload a generator. Now, I'm no mechanic, but, you know, we hear sayings, right? Mechanics will say, you know, a generator is going to like to run about 85% of capacity, right? That's, I've heard, 87%. Um, and the same thing with even a diesel engine, right? Diesel engines like to run loaded uh, at about 80, 85%, more than they would uh, at lower RPMs and less loaded. So yes, Roy's right, uh, and their me the mechanic is right as well. You don't want to have all your AC loads running at the same time, and it's possible as you overload the generator that you're going to have an oil slick at the back. So yeah, managing power is really important. Great question from Roy, and thanks for asking. So if you're curious again, go on our website and find out more answers and solutions with this sort of setup. And thanks for asking, and thanks for all of you for listening and tuning in.